So my name is Pippa Creary. And I'm Bob Klosky. And we live in Ship Harbor in Nova Scotia. And this is our earth bermed tire home that we've been working on for quite some time. Maybe three years. Maybe three years. Yeah. Give or take. Give or take a year or yeah. Months or days. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so this was seemed like a really great idea about 20 years ago. Um, when I first heard about uh, Earthships, they were originally started by a person called Michael Reynolds in uh, New Mexico in the 70s. And he was an architect and he was looking at all the incredible amount of waste that we produce and was trying to think of a way to use some of that garbage so that we wouldn't be creating more garbage and using up some of what is already out there. So that was really appealing to me, that, that concept. And also uh, the way this house functions is that it um, basically takes care of all of its needs independently. So that was something else that I found particularly appealing about this type of house. So um, as, I, as we said, we started about three years ago and um, Bob came out and, well, that was even before three years. Yeah. Yeah. It's about four years ago I came out and did all the clearing. Mm. Cleared the land. <coughs> and at that time we thought, mm, this looks pretty level. Um, obviously the house has to be facing, well maybe it's not obvious, uh, has to be facing south. The way this house uh, functions is that the uh, uh, sun comes in through the windows, heats up the structure, which is tires filled with dirt. Uh, there's a berm all the way around behind the house and the sides of the most of the house uh, and an earthen floor, which also absorbs the heat and then as the house cools off the heat is given it's absorbed into the dirt and then it's given back into the house when the house cools off so that's kind of the basic uh, principle of the house is that once it's up and running uh, it takes maybe two or three years for it to come into balance that it the temperature fluctuates within the house within a fairly narrow range and um, it's able to maintain a comfortable uh, temperature within the house. It's taken us three years so far. A big part of that was filling tires. Uh, each tire had to be pounded with dirt and pounded hard. And there's about somewhere around a thousand tires that the two of us filled ourselves. Um, so that's what's taken a lot of our time. Once we got to doing actual working with wood, um, doing carpentry work, uh, things have gone a lot faster um, the last little bit. Currently um, we're working on uh, getting ready for electrical service. Um, we're working on getting in uh, power supply which will be uh, through solar. It'll be off-grid. Uh, we will have a rainwater collection system so we've got cisterns in the back and we've got about 3,000 gallons of holding capacity and it'll come in it'll be filtered and that'll be our drinking water supply um, as far as septic there's no requirement for any kind of a huge septic system because we'll we will have a composting toilet so there'll be no black water involved for treating. And all of our gray water will be from our showers and our sinks. Uh, we'll go through uh, a planter in the front of the house. It's designed to filter that gray water before it exits down into a small tiny filtration bed down the front of the house. Uh, we'll be able to grow plants year-round in the planter in the front of the house. So the way the uh, filter water filtration system works for the gray water is we have these lovely apple barrels here and for example our kitchen sink will be there. We've got a pipe running into here. Uh, the water drops down into the barrel and this whole planter that runs the front of the house has two feet of stone in it and it's, it's within this uh, EPDM liner 
and it's sloped towards the center so in the center there there'll be a hand pump there's a pipe coming up and uh, a, like a well kind of thing if you if you'd like and uh, you can pump the water up and then use it to water your your plants with there's uh, an overflow system from that pipe that leads to a small infiltration bed out in the yard the finished planter will actually be uh, more of a level closer to the uh, to the bottom of the, the window there so that'll be built up quite a bit and filled full of dirt still we have friends in Ontario that built one they're living in it and they talk about having bananas growing in theirs and they get out of bed in the morning when the bananas are ripe they get out of bed in the morning and walk over to the banana tree and pick a banana and sit down and have a fresh banana <laughs> uh, for breakfast so maybe bananas might be in the future <laughs> maybe some figs who knows yeah I like to have some herbs and some grow some vegetables and some flowers because flowers make you happy Uh, ventilation uh, is a really important part of uh, this type of construction and um, we had, there's no HVAC system in this house uh, but to make code um, you have to have some kind of ventilation obviously and in this particular house we put in vent tubes and um, there's uh, a lower one and a higher one in each of the four rooms and the principle behind that is that if the uh, the rooms cool off uh, the cold air will drop down um, through the lower tubes and the warmer air will come in through the top and vice versa if the room is heating up too much that the warmer air will go out through the top vents and cool air will come in through the bottom uh, all the lower vents and all the top vents connect uh, with each other so all the top vents are connecting all the lower vents are connecting and then those two they all come into two main tubes which run all the length of the house along the back of the building and uh, come out to daylight in front and they run side by side so that the cooler air uh, coming in from outside is warmed by the warmer air going uh, out so you don't get a blast of cold winter air uh, coming into your house uh, to meet code requirements, we've had to put fans on these, uh, each individually controlled. Another possibility for ventilation for these houses is to have uh, solar chimneys in them. Uh, rather than that, we went with a skylight in each of the back, each of the four rooms, in the back of the rooms. Uh, and they will double as ventilation and also to provide more light into the back. Every other window in the front opens, so you'll get a good airflow from the front going up and out through the back skylights and we're also going to install a few DC fans in the event that we want to move more air so it's really important to keep the air moving keep it fresh so you don't have moisture problems in the house and the floor is going to be an earthen floor typically a slab on grade if you will floor you have to have uh vapor barriers and you have to have insulation <clears throat> in this case we are probably going to be putting in a vapor barrier but we will not be insulating the floor because the whole part of the way the house mm -hmm. works is sun comes in heat moves to cold so it moves into your walls it moves into your berm for storage but that's also an important part of the floor so you if you insulate that then the, it's not going to absorb the heat mm. but by not having the insulation on that floor it'll, it'll draw the heat down and the floor will actually when, when it <coughs> when, when it's required that heat will radiate back up and help to warm your floor mm. it'll become big part of your battery so to speak of, of heating for the house and <coughs> we also have supplemental heating through a wood cook stove that that we will have in uh, actually in this room in the house and hopefully if if need be that'll be enough to to keep us keep us warm during the cold periods until the the house 
starts to work and work work really well. So you will notice that uh, the walls here are curved in this room. This room is the uh, uh, sitting room, kitchen area, and eating area over there. Uh, there's a bedroom and then another room for possible visitors to stay or guitar playing or yoga or activities such as that. And then there's a bathroom and a uh, utility room down at the far end where the uh, water filtration is and the water tanks and the uh, electrical uh, comes in there. And uh, so the reason we built, we decided to complicate our lives infinitely by building curved walls. This is sort of the old style of uh, earth ship, if you want. And um, all of the rooms have curl curved walls, which makes it that much more difficult when you think about building the uh, form for the uh, concrete bond beam, for example, or the sill. Rather than building just a straight piece of sill, you have to cut it up into itty bitty little bits and they fit all the angles and things. So we were somewhat regretful for that decision, but not really um, because it looks cool. Uh, the other reason it's, it's good is because it adds structural strength because uh, of the curve and the way the, the tires are all tied in together. Uh, the more modern earth ships now, uh, a lot of them are uh, just back straight across and then back up again and they have to be fortified with concrete buttresses at intervals to strengthen the wall that way and a lot of people have chosen to do their interior walls in wood rather than the uh, the heavier uh, tire walls that we have here uh, we decide to go with the tire walls because that adds a lot more mass to your house and the more mass you have in the house, the greater heat retention that you're going to have and cooling potential uh, for your house. But it does take up uh, living space, so it's, it's a trade-off. Everything's a trade-off in building, uh, we've discovered. So what that does is, <coughs> this house I think is around 1,400 square feet of living space but the footprint is way larger mm. because of the thicknesses of all the different walls. And so when you walk in here, you say, wow, this is huge. And the spaces are comfortable size, but they're, they're not excessive. So it'll, it'll be a comfortable place in the end. And as Pippa said, we'll have a lot more mass to absorb that heat and to act as part of the battery. And that's actually a really interesting point that Bob brought up in terms of footprint because I was thinking about it the other day and there's in my mind three maybe more kind of footprints that you have. You have the footprint in terms of the amount of square feet you're taking up on the land and the modifications that you have to make to the land in order to accommodate your home and this for this home that's quite a large footprint relative to the amount of living space that you have. The second footprint is the materials that go into uh, the living space and what's the energy, embodied energy in those, where did they come from, how were they produced, um, what resources were made to produce those materials and in this home by using uh, recycled tires which are basically garbage um, we were trying to reduce our footprint in that sense and dirt we have had to use some modern building materials um, because there is code that we have to follow and also budgetary constraints that if you were to use um, a more environmentally friendly option we just couldn't afford it so uh, that's the second footprint and the third footprint is once the house is up and running what is that house going to require in terms of resources to maintain uh, livable space so that's the appealing part of this particular type of home in that uh, if you've thought things out very carefully and it works according to those principles that it will require very little resources in order to maintain itself. So I guess 
the first one it's a very large footprint in terms of relative to the living actual living space second one in terms of resources um, I think it does quite well in that we've used a lot of recycled materials uh, third one in terms of looking after itself and not requiring a lot of additional resources in order to maintain itself uh, I think it gets a good grade on that so we will we will heat with the Sun we will <coughs> our water will come from the rain um, will be sort of self-sufficient and one of the nicest things that I'm looking forward to is if we choose to have internet that will be our only bill because there will be no utility bills there will be no heating bills um, the house will will run itself mm -hmm. except for the taxes except for the taxes <laughs> you gotta pay a tax man all right so these are the uh, wing walls of the uh, building and you can see they're curved around as well similar to the walls inside uh, these are part of the engineered uh, plan for the building and behind this is there's a, a dirt berm that goes all the way from the top down to the bottom there so this wing wall the function of this wall is to hold that uh, berm in place it also provides uh, some strength to the end of the wall rather than just having it the, the tire wall and that that you um, could potentially come over and that sort of helps to keep that in line as well this <laughs> we <haven't> got to <laughs> this will be our patio area and typically with these houses this U wall the wall on this this U would come right out to the front and this would be the wing wall would be here rather than back there and it would you'd have more berm but with our lot and, and and the way the house is positioned we have a beautiful view that you can't see right now but we have a beautiful view um, down the harbor that it's sort of our million dollar view that we didn't want to lose so instead we decided to go shorten that wall bring our wing wall back further and have the glass doors here and the wraparound glass here just to uh, give us that morning view and to provide a nice space if we ever get to be able to enjoy it we get the house finished it'll be a nice sp space to sit out here and have our morning coffees or teas mm -hmm. so I guess in kind of wrapping it up I'm just trying to think of what's what's really important to think about when you're designing a house when you're working on a house and I I mean first and foremost uh, what impact is this house going to have on our planet in terms of a footprint in terms of materials you're using are you using local materials how are they sourced uh, what's the effect and I mean there's there's sort of ripple effects too you know how are the workers treated who produce the materials that you're using I mean there's there's wider and wider effects on everything from everything that you do and also once your house is built what effect is that going to have on our planet how is that going to fit in and and contribute to the health of our planet so I think as as a designer um, you always want to have those as, as kind of basic principles and and use that as your base point from from which to work. <laughs>